Hello, and welcome to another presentation of 5-Minute Cybersecurity. Multi-factor authentication is commonly used to protect everything we want to keep private on the internet. However, threat actors have become more sophisticated and are now able to hack many types of MFA. In this presentation, I will explain how they do it and tell you which types of MFA are the most secure. I am Bill Osolinski, a certified information system security professional with 30 years of experience. The first method is called reverse proxy phishing. Reverse proxy phishing is a type of attack where cyber criminals act as intermediaries between a user and the web servers they are trying to access. This is how the attack works. The attacker lures the victim to a phishing page. The reverse proxy displays a legitimate login form. The reverse proxy forwards requests and returns responses from the company's website. The reverse proxy sniffs the victim's traffic as it passes through the proxy. And the attacker uses the user's account in real time to begin the abuse. The next method is malware. Malware is software that is specifically designed to disrupt, damage, or gain unauthorized access to computer systems. The most common malware used to attack MFA is called Malabot, which only affects Android phones. Malware used to attack MFA works in the following ways. Uses accessibility API for remote control, sends and intercepts SMS or text messages, injects overlays to collect information, bypasses browser-based Google MFA, collects Google Authenticator MFA codes, and steals cookies and crypto wallets. And lastly, social engineering. Social engineering requires that you already know the username and password and comes in four flavors. First is automated one-time password collection in which a bot is designed to convince a user to provide their MFA code to verify their identity. And then there's manual one-time password collection in which a human operator convinces the user to provide their MFA code to verify their identity. In SIM swaps, the SIM from a mobile device is swapped with one which contains malware for harvesting MFA codes. And lastly, push bombing, in which so many one-time password requests are generated that the user respond to stop the annoyance. I have two recommendations. Number one, Employ public key infrastructure-based authentication whenever possible. Public key infrastructure-based authentication uses a certificate to validate data being sent from one point to another. The certificate is digitally signed by one or more trusted parties. The certificate certifies that a particular cryptographic key belongs to a specific user or device and is safe to use. Examples include device biometrics such as Windows Hello, Face ID, and Touch ID, hardware-based passkeys such as YubiKey, and sync passkeys such as the iCloud keychain. The other recommendation is where one-time passwords are obligatory for MFA, employ configurations that limit information gained such as submitting one-time passwords with the credentials, not afterwards, and concatenating one-time passwords to your regular password. That's all for this presentation. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And thank you for watching.